Now it's time to welcome our first guest, Dr. Lawrence Kotlikoff. He's an economics professor at Boston University. He's also the author or co-author of more than a dozen books, including the bestseller, Get What's Yours, The Revised Secrets to Maxing Out Your Social Security Benefits. Dr. Kotlikoff, thanks for joining us here again for another episode on the Income Generation. Um, it's my pleasure, Dave. So we talked a lot on the show today about the, the SECURE Act, but we also talked about the Social Security 2100 Act. And I know you're a little skeptical that that's going to solve the problem. Talk to us about that. Well, Social Security is in much worse shape than most people uh, think, including most members of Congress, because I don't think they've actually read the trustees' report that came out in June. If you look at table 6F1, which is conveniently buried at the very back of the report, it shows the system is $43 trillion in the red. So that's the unfunded liability. That says if you look at all the benefits from now till the end of time that they project and subtract all the taxes and do this in present value the right way and subtract the trust fund, which is small, you're short $43 trillion. That's like two years of GDP. That's two, basically two years of government. I mean, that's uh, twice the official debt. So the social security system has debt, red ink, that's more than twice as large as, or about twice as large as the total official debt that's, um, that we've been worried about. So uh, raising, uh, as this uh, social security 2100 act would do, which is raise the, uh, payroll taxation on rich people would certainly help, but it's only going to make a dent. It probably would do about, because the act also would raise benefits. So it's not like it's going to produce all that much net revenue. So, so in your opinion, then, in the 45 seconds we have left in this block, one of the things that they must do is have some sort of either cut in benefits or some sort of needs testing. In other words, it's not just offense, not just revenue. There's a defensive component also. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, I would freeze the current system in place, pay off what we owe, and not let anybody accrue any extra benefits under the old system, and then force people to contribute 10% into a fully funded uh, account, which is collectively invested in the global market, which is also progressive, where the government makes matching contributions. So there are ways to do this right. We're not doing them right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you know, I don't, I don't know your party affiliation. It doesn't really matter, Zero. but you know... Uh, we do have an election. We do have an election coming up in just 16 months. And based on what you're saying, I might consider voting for you. So right after the commercial break, I want to hear your thoughts about more of this. And you stay with us, too. We have more here on the income generation. We'll be right back in a moment. And let's welcome back Dr. Lawrence Kotlikoff economics professor at Boston University, and author or co-author of a dozen books, including Get What's Yours, The Revised Secrets to Maxing Out Your Social Security Benefits. So thanks for sticking around. Sure. So since I need to figure out now whether I want to vote for you for President of the United States in 2020, and we're talking about legislation, let's pivot for a second, and let's talk about the SECURE Act. Um, how how far do you think the SECURE Act actually goes in terms of helping motivate people, enabling them to save for retirement to a greater extent? Well, it seems, it seems to me that it's mostly for rich people because it allows uh, people to wait until 72 rather than 70 and a half to start taking, their, uh, uh, taking uh, minimum distributions from their retirement accounts, as far as I understand it. Uh, and on the other on the other hand, it uh, forces people that inherit retirement accounts to take their money out within ten years, rather than for the rest of their life. So it's got some pluses and minuses for rich people, but it's not really about uh, poor people and middle class people. What we really need to do is realize that Social Security is in terrible trouble fiscally. Uh, the retirement system has not worked. Having a hundred different types of programs to which people don't contribute enough, to which people um, may make bad investments. Uh, this is not working. We need a new retirement system 
everybody should be contributing 10% of their pay to a joint fund that's invested by a laptop in a global index of stocks and bonds where the proportions are weight are based on uh, an index fund where they're uh, you know, b done by computer, so it's not up for any Wall Street uh, person's decision making, and there's no fees. And then you get your money out in proportion to what you put in uh, in retirement in a payment that continues until you die. And the, the contributions would be split 50-50 between spouses. And there'd also be matching contributions for the poor by uh, the government. That's a retirement system that makes sense. That's the kind of thing that Norway and Singapore and Australia, you know, intelligent countries are actually doing as I speak. Now you're talking about a government sponsored system. Um, and of course we are here on Newsmax television, a pretty conservative group who might say, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. We don't need bigger government. We need less this is government. Smaller, this so is small government, uh, David, uh, David, because you, what you do is you're, you put money in and now a computer takes over and invest it your money and everybody else's in the same way in the global marketplace. Nobody, um, uh, so people's retirements are not a function of whether or not they had a good uh, broker or not, and they don't have to pay any fees. This would all be done at zero cost. So there's actually no government here. There's a laptop. My entire, my um, uh, MacBook Pro could run the entire system. So would, uh, would this essentially do away with individual 401k plans by, from various companies because it would be more of a, a macro plan offered to employees everywhere in the United States? Yeah, 401k plans have been, a, a, unfortunately, they've been a failure. The whole system of retirement accounts, all they've done is enriched Wall Street at the, you know, because every time we contribute to these accounts, we have to pay for the fees, the maintenance administration. This can all be done by my laptop, literally. So if you want to have less government, less regulation, there's ways to do it. I'm not for big government. I think the Social Security's bureaucracy, you know, Social Security has hundreds of thousands of rules uh, that are absolutely incomprehensible. That's why I had to write that book, Get What's Yours, a bestseller. It's not because it's a simple system. So I'm with you and your viewers 100% that we need to have less government where government's not operating. Good. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad to hear that on behalf of all of our viewers. We need to take a quick commercial break. Please stay with us for another segment. And you stay with us, too. We'll be back here with more coming up in just a bit on the income generation. First, let's welcome back for one final segment, author and good friend of the income generation, Dr. Lawrence Kotlikoff. Dr. Kotlikoff, thanks again for sticking around for one last segment here. So your comments at the end of the last segment about less government uh, means that you've got my vote. So if you decide to run in November of 2020, you have my, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, I shouldn't say that yet. Um, because, as you know, we currently have an economics expert in the White House at this particular time, right? So let me back up and let me ask you a generic economics question getting away from Social Security for just a moment. And that question is this inverted yield curve that we're talking about right now. Um, making the news, you hear it everywhere. Um, how bad is that? How concerned do we have to be about that? And as an economist, what do you think that means? I think people are panicking. And that's, you know, when you move into, uh, if you think that you... Uh, Things are so bad that the best thing you can do is to invest in a 30-year treasury bond at 2%. Uh, you have to be really, really nervous about the future of the economy. Uh, but if you're sensible and realize uh, that the, our country is so broke that we're going to be printing money, then you want to stay as far away as possible from any kind of investment like that. So what I see the uh, inverted yield curve as showing us in these low rates is the kind of panic we saw back in 2008. And this is really what can kick off a recession. It's not so much any particular fact or uh, uh, true economic outcome, but if everybody collect gets collectively scared, we can have a recession, we can have a self-fulfilling prophecy. Sure we can. 
So, yeah. okay, but is it that, or in the one minute we have left, uh, is it global pressure? Is it the fact that we've got negative interest rates all over Europe and in countries like Italy and Spain that ideally, theoretically, have more risk than ours, but yet their bond yields are lower? So is this a global thing more than a panic thing? Uh, your thoughts? Or is it a global I, panic? I think it may be uh, uh, a global, you know, global panic. And the fact that the German 30-year bond rate is now negative, uh, this doesn't make, really make uh, much sense at all. You know, you may have people in developing countries saying, gee, I just want to keep my money safe, even if I get a zero or even a negative return, I think it'll be safer in Germany than in China. So we don't quite know where all this is coming from, but we do know that uh, from history, from a long history and also recent history, that if enough people get enough, you know, scared enough, we will have a recession. Uh, and what, what's very interesting right now is that the searches on Google for a recession have gone like this. Yes. You know, it's yep. uh, just spiked up. All because and, of our friends in the media, absolutely. Uh, well, also, we have, you know, thank, I, thanks so much for being on the show. Unfortunately, we need to leave it there for today. We're out of time. And thanks for being such a good friend of the income generation. And you stay with us also. We'll be right back here with more in just a moment.